Hey everyone, what's going on? Today I'm not in an ideal location to do any filming, but this is really the only place where I can film because today my school is having its final exams. So right now I'm standing in the GenCon of my school's gymnasium, but today I want to talk to you about paying some bills and really paying those bills at the Combini. So with me I have my internet bill. Um, so in Japan you have NTT, which I'll show you right here, NTT, which is the Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Company. They're very huge, they're all throughout Japan, and they may very well be the only internet provider. Um, along with NTT though, you'll have a secondary bill, and this one comes from a company called Topa, which this is my last bill for a two-year contract with them, which I will pay later today after I leave work. And I'm very happy to have this paid off, this two-year contract fulfilled. These guys are really incredibly expensive. And I've been overpaying probably about a thousand yen a month for two years. Um, there's a lot of you know ISP providers that you can go through. This one, I didn't really know when I came here because no one taught me or I, there's really no videos out there to explain different uh, uh, providers that you can go through. So when I signed up through NTT, I was automatically signed to Topa. And when I talk about this with other people in my area, both foreigners and Japanese alike, no one has Topa and no one's ever heard of Topa. And this is actually talking with, uh, with like computer engineers at my city hall. They have no idea what this company is. All they know is that it's very expensive. How expensive? It's um, every month I have to pay, I don't know if you can see it too well. It's a, right here. It's 1,555 yen. The company I'm switching to is called Asahi Net, and I will pay about 500 yen a month. So you can see it's a huge difference in price. And uh, also, from my experience, these guys just absolutely throttle my internet, uh, and it's just ridiculous. But anyway, the point of this video is not really to complain, it's to tell you what to do with your bills, which I'm sure most of you already know, because there's lots of videos on YouTube about it. Anyway, you'll receive a bill like this in the mail, and when you open it up, you'll come across, it'll open up and it'll look like this. So basically this first page just has some generic information, mainly it has their address um, and also it has my address, which I'm actually going to block out in the video so I don't know why I showed you. Anyway, you can just take this part, just remove it. You don't need it at all. You're just going to bring this part to the convenience store. And when you pay bills in Japan at a you know, convenience store, konbini, you, you have your barcode. If your bill does not have a barcode, you cannot pay it at a konbini. So it's just a heads up for you. Along with being able to pay at a konbini, there's a variety of places where you can go. So providing your bill has a barcode, there's also a list of places where you can go. So on the back you can see there's places like Lawson, Family Mart, I personally always go to 7-Eleven, but there's other places like Daily Yamazaki and I don't even know most of these to be honest with you guys. The Suncus, I, uh, I've rarely seen that one, but basically you have your three big ones, 7-Eleven, Lawson, Family Mart. And again, personally, I prefer 7-Eleven. Uh, anyway, so you'll just go, you'll go into the Combini, bring it up to the register and they'll scan it and when you're finished and you pay they'll uh, they'll return oh what portion of the bill is it I believe they will return to you there's three portions so this is uh, the first portion there's a second portion right here you'll receive this middle portion and then the third portion they'll keep so one goes to the Combini one goes to you and then one goes to the company it's pretty simple. It's really fast and so uh, I pay my internet at the Konbini and that's about it. 
Another option that you can go through is called Furikomi, which I pay for all my other bills with the exception of internet. Um, it's just the way things worked out. I didn't plan it that way, just that's kind of how things just fell into place. Anyway, moving on to your NTT bill. So you'll have your NTT bill, basic information. The same, uh, you can keep the top portion, you don't need it. The only thing you really need to do is remove the bottom portion. And again, it's the same thing, barcode, so you can pay the kombini, no problem. And they'll take their hanko and they'll stamp it all over the place. And when they're finished, you'll receive this final little strip right here at the end. So guys, it's pretty easy. And if you move here, when you get your internet, check your providers because you can always change and before you're locked into contracts. And if you move to Japan and you have your internet, I highly advise you talk to your coworkers, friends, anyone about who's the best in the area, you know, how's the service, and that way you're not going to get locked into a two-year contract like I did with uh, with these guys. All right, guys. So that's all for today. Uh, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.